Thank you for coming and thank you for the invitation to, um, to talk about the topic of conservative management of uh, stiff shoulder. So, frozen shoulder is currently considered to be a self-limited disease, but uh, however, most patients seek for medical treatment because uh, of uh, its long duration and uh, then discomforting um, symptoms. Physical therapists in our clinic have an advantage. They deal with patients after uh, they have met our doctors. Uh, so a clear diagnosis has been made. Uh, that implies that conservative treatment has been discussed and chosen. Uh, it's a pathology that affects uh, the um, ligaments and the capsule, and uh, not the joint in itself, uh, but even if an underlying uh, uh, anatomical lesion ex coexists, uh, we just have initially to lead with the inflammation and the thickening of the shoulder capsule, uh, which lead to pain and loss of function. What do patients want from us? Uh, they, uh, we have to educate them about their problem, about the pathophysiology, how exercise can help. They need uh, personalized and individualized care, and mainly they need our support and motivation during the treatment period. Uh, eventually, they uh, seek for uh, pain relief and improved function. At first, we take a record of the clinical picture by uh, completing the asses and the shoulder uh, scores, by measuring the range of motion and the strength, and by um, a, and, um, completing the visual analyzed score for pain. Let us focus first on pain. Pain is an output produced by our brain in response to what it perceives as danger. Um, feeling pain is not necessarily um, associated with heart, uh, with the tissue damage, but if a pain persists, uh, creates an upregulation in nociception. When pain experience is considered as a low threat, a priority is given to life goals, uh, uh, to life goals and a positive effect to recovery is observed. When pain experience is considered as a high threat, Pain control takes uh, priority, and the harm representation leads to pain-related fear and avoidance. So a, a negative effect uh, supplies pain, and a phenomenon of a vicious circle appears. It's our responsibility to educate the patients when, uh, to, to recognize when they feel tension, either uh, soreness or pain. Moreover, uh, some environmental and personal factors can influence perceived pain intensity. Therefore, the ICF provides a description of situations regarding to human functioning and its restrictions and serves as a framework to organize this information. Modalities may be used to facilitate the rehabilitation process. We shall not forget to uh, use heat therapy or massage techniques to relieve muscle spasms and tissue tenderness. Uh, facial restrictions in one uh, region of a body uh, cause stress in other regions caused to, due to facial continuity. So um, myofascial release, uh, it is said to be effective uh, to provide an optimal length and decrease pain. Restoring the function on a stiff shoulder uh, um, requires us to understand what stiffness, uh, what the, the term stiffness entails. Stiffness is a continuously adapting property of skeletal muscles, adjusting day to day to the experienced range of motion. So skeletal muscles properties are dynamic and affect, reflect the history of use over the, the past few days or weeks. Stretching is uh, an effective strategy for increasing range of motion and remodeling the, the collagen complex. And in our clinic is of utmost importance to clarify to the patients 
that stretching is a totally different process from strengthening. The goal of a, strengthening, uh, of a stretching exercise is to lengthen the, muscles, the muscle tissue to improve how far one can move a body part. The goal of a strengthening uh, exercise is to increase the bulk of the muscle so that uh, one can increase the force that the muscle can produce. So for stretching, we usually hold for 30 seconds for the tissue to have the time to lengthen. And for strengthening, we usually do sets and reps in order to fatigue the muscles. So strengthening is a repeated muscle contraction until the muscle becomes tired. And stretching is slow, sustained lengthening of the muscle. There is also a time dependency in the range of motion gains, mainly related to the total time spent stretching per day or week, rather than the time spent uh, stretching per session, uh, as the shoulder uh, becomes more stiff uh, again in the middle time between sessions. Moreover, uh, pushing the shoulder into uh, painful ranges may cause greater periarticular damage, uh, while uh, a low load prolonged stretch within its patient's tolerance level may result in safe, effective, and timely return to full uh, motion. So based on the above, we give patients four stretching tips. Stretch until you feel tension to your tolerance level. Hold for 30 seconds. Return to the initial position posture mildly and perform stretches every two or three stretches every two or three hours. Do we skip strengthening? Of course not. Uh, we skip shoulder strengthening and we focus on scapular uh, uh, functional stabilization training. In any case, uh, we always keep in mind that um, the assessment of the scapulohumeral uh, rhythm and scapular kinematics provides a, a therapeutic insight for functional recovery. Uh, on the other side, prolonged alter alterations as a compensatory mechanism cause further damage to the proprioception-related muscle mechanisms. One of the keys uh, to the success of our approach is to gain neuromuscular dynamic control over the newly gained range of motion and function. Therefore, patients are urged to follow a home exercising program, uh, preferably uh, combined with the use of a shoulder pacemaker. And uh, they're urged also to take up recreational activities such as swimming and, uh, or walking or yoga because practicing activity leads to better performance of uh, these. Uh, a home visit uh, always provides information for environmental adjustments. And at the last stage of our rehabilitation, uh, after the range of motion has been gained, uh, we start to gradually uh, strengthen the rotator cuff muscles with assistive, active, and resistant exercises. And step by step, we advise patients to return to athletic activities. So summing up, the treatment of uh, stiff shoulder is lengthy and difficult. We shall not forget the person attached to the stiff shoulder. And motivating and guiding is our responsibility. So a take home message for both patients and clinicians could actually be that it always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you.